This tutorial will show you how to make an advanced full color image using Micro Observatory Image. So right now we have three images open. We have one taken with a red filter, a blue filter, and a green filter. And then we have something called a dark. And so basically what a dark image is, is every image that's created by a digital detector or imager has electronic noise built into it. So we need a dark image or an image with no light falling on the detector so we can remove this noise from our final image. So first we're going to adjust the image levels to see what's actually there. So we'll go to Process Adjust Image and then click Auto. And here we can see there are a bunch of little tiny pixels there that aren't supposed to be there. Those are digital noise that's built into the detector. So let's see what's in each of these images too. There's the green filter, there's the blue filter, and here's the red filter. And you can see there are little tiny dots and those are pixels that are too noisy, we want to get rid of them. So in order to do that, we're going to subtract all of these pixels from each of the color filter images. So we're going to go to Process, Image Calculator, Subtract, the Dark. So click OK, and that will create a new image for our red filter dumbbell nebula. So we'll save this, go to File, Save As, Fits, and we're going to save this as red dark sub, so that's dark subtracted dot F-I-T-S. So there's our new red filter we're going to work with. So since we have a new red one, we can get rid of the old red one. Don't have to save that. So here we have a blue. Same thing, process, image calculator, subtract the dark, click OK. File, save as, fits, blue, dark sub dot F-I-T-S. Click Save, get rid of the old blue, and here we have our green. Same thing, we're going to subtract all of the noisy pixels, Process, Image Calculator, Subtract, the Dark, OK. File, Save as, Fits, and this is going to be green, dark, sub, dot F-I-T-S. Save. So now we have our three color images we want to work with. So we're going to go ahead and close the dark. Don't need that. And also we're going to close the green, which we were going to do before. Excellent. So now we need to enhance the images any, even more. So we're going to go to Process, Reduce Noise, and that's going to get rid of some more noise in our images. First we'll hit Auto to see what's actually there. We'll do that one with this too. Auto. So here, Process, Reduce Noise. That gets rid of even more pixels that we don't want to be there. Click Auto to get the levels right. Process, Reduce Noise. And now to sharpen the images, to get the pixels that are there even sharper. Process, Sharpen. Same thing. Process, Sharpen, and Process, Sharpen. There we go. So now we want to adjust the levels in each of the images to get the best possible contrast. So we'll start with our blue image. So detectors in general have a hard time recording blue light. So to compensate for this, we're actually going to make the blue light a little brighter by changing the levels. So here we're going to drag this slider up closer to the black and we're going to get even more in our blue image, which is great. We can play with these levels until we find something that we like. So we're going to adjust this one a little bit more. We're going to make the red brighter as well. We can even make this minimum a little bit like this so we can have better contrast in our image. There we go. So there's our red. So now let's adjust the levels in the blue as well, or the green as well. So here we go, we'll make the green even brighter. So now what we need to do is color the images. So I renamed my FITS files using the color filter they were taken with. But if you need a reminder to see what filter your image was taken with, you can do that by looking at the FITS header. So go to Window, FITS header, and this will show you all of the information that is with this image. And so the 
filter is going to be right here, kind of in the middle. So here we have filter blue. So we know that because ours is labeled blue, but in case you forgot to name yours specifically when you saw them off the website, then you can go back and look at the fits header to find out what filter each of the images was taken with. So we're going to go to process, color tables, make that blue. You can even make this a little brighter so we can have some more blue in our image. Now this one's red, process, color tables, we'll choose red, process, color tables, choose green. So now each of our images is colored the way we want it to be. So now we want to put these images in a stack. So we'll go to process, stack, convert images to stack. Great. But if we flip through them, we'll notice that they're off a little bit. They were taken at slightly different times. So to remedy that, we need to shift them a little bit in relation to each other so that they, when they stack up on each other, they'll be perfect. So process, shift. Now we'll use this window here to shift the images in relation to each other. So for the background, let's choose green because that's by far the easiest to shift over. And for the first foreground, we'll select red. Now you can see that they're off from each other. So we can either use the mouse to click and drag to line them up as best we can. You can also use this little box over here to see your magnification. So as I drag around, you can see how the things change in relation to each other. So you can also use your keys. You can use the J key, the L key, the K key, and the I key to move, make it very fine adjustments. You can also change this magnification over here if you want very, very fine adjustments. See, so you can, in the box over here to the right, you can see we're blown up quite a bit. So you can find a bright star, then use the keys to line up exactly the way we want it. So great, when we have something we like, we'll select the next one. So now let's go to blue. So now we're going to line up the blue image. So we'll do the same thing, we'll use our mouse and we'll also hover our mouse over an area we want and then use the area on the right to line up the stars exactly perfectly. That looks really good. So when we're happy with the alignment, we're going to click OK. And now we have our stack. They're all lined up against each other, so it should look really good. So process, stack. Convert stack to RGB. So that means we're going to stack all of the images on top of each other and come up with our final image. So there it is. There's the Dumbbell Nebula. Now to save this in a format we'll be able to use elsewhere, we're going to go to File, Save as, GIF, and we'll save this as dumbbell.gif. So we can zoom in there to see what it looks like. There's our Dumbbell Nebula.